Hello, dear students. Welcome to our English program. Today, our lesson is from Unit 1, Lesson 1, Grade 10. Dear students, we'll have a break now, and then we'll come back to you. OK, right. So we're going to start with new vocabulary items. The first vocabulary item is nutrition. Now, look at the word nutrition. As you can see, it's a noun. And it is divided into three parts. New, tree, shin. But when you say the word, you stress the word, the part tree. So you say nutrition. 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 Right. The word nutrition is a non-count noun. It means that you cannot say one nutrition, two nutrition. We cannot, we cannot make it plural. So this type of noun is non-count noun. Now, let's look at the meaning or the definition of the word nutrition. Right? So the word nutrition means all the types of food that we eat, which, is, which helps us grow and the, it makes us healthy, right? This is the meaning of the word definition. Now let's go back, let's go back and look at the, as an example of definition. Here, the example is from, let's say for example, somebody was ill and uh, to become healthy or to recover, to become well again, he or she needs what? To, he needs good nutrition. Without good nutrition, he will not recover or she will not recover. Now, the next item is what? Dietitian. The word dietitian is a noun. And it is a count noun, which means that we can add S to it and becomes what? Dietitians. For S pronunciation, you can see that the word dietitian is divided into three parts. Dietitian. And the stress is on T. So you have dietitian. So we say dietitian. Right. Now, let's uh, look at the meaning of dietitian. Well, a dietitian is a person whose job is to advise people and give them advice about how to eat healthily. As an example of dietitian, you can think of a situation when somebody, or you for example, you have a problem with being obese or fat, and you go to a dietitian, and he will advise you on how to uh, reduce your fat or how to become or to have less fat in your body. Right now, let's move to the next word or well here you have immune system. The immune, the immune system is a system in our body which helps us, it protects our body. It's uh, cells inside and organs in our, inside our body which protects us from diseases. The word only immune is an adjective and it is divided into two parts. E, which is in red, and immune. When you say the word immune, you stress immune, this, this the second part. So you say immune, immune, right? And as an example here, you can say we have a lot of things that helps us or helps our immune system or makes it stronger. Like you have, it is believed or doctors, they say we have to drink green tea because it helps our immune system. And when we speak about our uh, immune system, we can say that our immune system 
is made up of different organs and cells. Now, let's move to the next item. It is the word probiotic. The word probiotic is an adjective. The word is divided into three parts. Pro, bi, tick. Pro, bi, tick. Now, when you pronounce the word, you say probiotic. Probiotic, right? Now, what does the word probiotic mean? This word is usually used with nouns. It is, it describes a noun. And it describes foods. Foods that contain good bacteria which keeps the body healthy. If you want to put it as an example, for an example, we can say that yogurt contains or is a biotic food, probiotic food, because it helps what fight diseases. Good. Now, let's move to the next item. It's the word digestive. It's also an adjective, and it, it relates to digestion. When we eat food, food goes in, inside our stomach, and it is digested. So the word digestive relates to the word, to the word digestion. Uh, right, you can say sometimes we have problems with our digestion if we eat food which is not, cannot be digested. And also, we can give an example. If you train yourself, train your muscles, training helps your body digest food easily. So training is good for digestion. Right, now, let's move to the next word. The word is absorb. It's a verb and it is divided into two parts or it has two parts. The first part is ab, the second part is zorb. And when you pronounce it, we focus on the second part. So we say absorb. Absorb. Right. Now, what does the word absorb mean? This is, as you can see on the screen, this is the definition of the word absorb. So absorb means to take in something, for example, a liquid, very slowly and gradually. Uh, you can have the example of a sponge. If you put a sponge in water, it will absorb water. It will absorb water. Another example, you know plants, plants they have roots. And for plants to grow, they use their roots to absorb water. Another example is for is with also with plants. You know that plants during the day they absorb carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. Good. Now Let's move to the next word. It is the word neutralize. It's a verb. As you can see, it has three parts. Neutralize. So when you pronounce the word, when you say the word, focus on the first part. Say neutralize. And you stress neutralize. Right? Good. So what does the word or the verb neutralize mean? Or its definition? Here, it means that you stop someone or something from being harmful, from harming you. And it is either somebody or something who or which will harm you and you stop him or it from harming you. Another meaning to make something weak, to weaken it, or to make its strength less, less stronger. Uh, the example here is 
when you speak, it's usually about bacteria. Bacteria in the body, especially good bacteria, it helps what? It helps neutralize the bad bacteria. In our body, we have both bad bacteria and good bacteria. And good bacteria, it neutralizes. It, 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 it doesn't let it work, okay? It doesn't let it be harmful to our health. Good, nice. Now, let's go back or to the next item. So the next item is antioxidant. It's a noun, and it's a count now. As you see, if you see S here, it means noun can be counted. We can say one, two, three, eight. you can add S, right? So it is a count noun. Well, the word or the noun antioxidant, as you can see, it is, has one, two, three, four, five, five parts. So you have anti antioxidant. When you pronounce it, we stress the word ox. So you say antioxidant, 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 right. So what is an antioxidant? Well, it's a substance, and it's something usually found in the body or in, some, or in other products. It is a substance which we add to food or to any other product with the aim to stop its activity. So this is the definition of antioxidants. Right, as an example, Vitamin C and all other vitamins and minerals are considered antioxidants. And they help the body uh, fight diseases and uh, infections. Good. Now, let's move to the next word. It's the word combat. It's a verb. And it is made up of two parts, combat. When you pronounce the word, focus on the second part, say combat. You can also pronounce it as combat, either combat or combat, right. So combat has to do with fighting something. So when you, combat means to stop something from happening. You don't want something to happen, you stop it, so you combat it or you fight it. Another meaning is to make or to become worse, to stop something from becoming worse, right? Uh, as an example of to combat or combat, if you are ill, for example, you go to the doctors, he gives you medicine, and medicine, what does medicine do? It helps us combat infection, illnesses, and diseases. The second example, also, if you feel stressed, for example, because a lot of work, I don't know, you're a student, you work hard, you feel stressed, what do you need to do? You need to exercise. So exercise combats effect, uh, sorry, the effects of stress. And the last example has to do with the police. The job of the police, or one of their jobs, is to combat crime and criminals. Nice, good. Now, let's go to the next word. So the word is arthritis. The word arthritis is a noun, and it's a non-count noun. We cannot add S to it, or we cannot say one, or two, or three arthritis. It's only singular, never plural. Right. As you can see, the word arthritis is divided into three parts, arthritis. And the focus or the stress is on th. So you say arthritis, arthritis, arthritis. Good. So what is arthritis? It is a disease. It is a disease. Look, this is a joint. This is a joint. This is a joint. We have also here small joints. When your joints or when the joint is swollen, swollen, or when you touch it, it's painful, we say that 
some, you, somebody has arthritis. If, for example, you cannot move this joint, and if you touch it, you feel painful and it is swollen, so we say you have arthritis. So it is a disease which causes the joints of the body to become swollen and painful. Now, of course, if the, somebody has arthritis, he needs to go to the doctors. And of course, the doctors will give you medicine for treating arthritis. Right. Now, the next item is what? Cholesterol. And I guess you all know what the word, it's a common word, cholesterol. Even in Arabic, you say cholesterol. So the word is a noun, and you say cholesterol. So the stress is on le, cholesterol, right? And it's a substance which found in the body and even in foods. For example, meat, there's a lot of cholesterol in meat, in meat, right? And examples, you can say, the doctor, I went to the doctor, he checked my cholesterol, and he found that I have too much cholesterol in, my, in the blood, so he, she gave me medicine to lower cholesterol in my blood. As an example, we can say that cholesterol can lead to serious problems such as heart attacks. Right? Now, let's move to the next item, vocabulary item. It's the word caffeine. It's a noun, and it's a non-count noun. You cannot count it. You cannot say one caffeine, two caffeines. It's always singular, never plural. And it has two parts, caf and in, right? Caffeine. Right. Now, so what is caffeine? It's a substance which you usually find in tea and coffee. When you drink tea and coffee, you also take in caffeine. And uh, the caffeine, what does it make to you? It makes you feel more awake. If, for example, at night you are studying and drinking coffee, you will not sleep because of caffeine. It keeps you awake, right? Now, and sometimes if you have problems with your stomach and you drink coffee, you will have problems and the doctor may advise you to stop or to avoid drinking caffeine. Good. Now, the next item or the word is stimulant. Well, you see S here, which means that it is a count now. You can say one, two, three stimulants, etc. Right? And it's a noun. And it is divided into three parts, stem, you, lent. So you have, when you pronounce it, focus on the first part. Say, stimulant, stimulant, right? Good. Now, what is a stimulant? So a stimulant is, a, for example, caffeine I've already seen is a stimulant. It is something that makes you more active or it gives you more energy. As we said before, as an example, is the example of caffeine. So caffeine is a stimulant. Good. Right. Now, let's move to the next word. Metabolize. When our body metabolizes food, it means that it changes food so that we can use it as energy. So this is the meaning of to metabolize. And as an example, uh, we have an example of the hormone insulin. You know, people who are diabetic, they, I mean, they need insulin. So this hormone is needed by the body to metabolize sugars. If you don't have enough insulin, your sugars in your body won't be metabolized. Right. Now, we will move to reading comprehension. We have the following text from your book. And you are required to read the text below 
which you are going to see now, and you answer the following question. The question says, what is the difference between good and bad bacteria? Now, now this is the text. The text is about probiotic drinks. Did you know that most of your immune system is located within your stomach and contains at least 400 different types of bacteria? Probiotic drinks, such as yogurt and Actimo, are a simple way of improving your immune system every day. Probiotic drinks contain billions of good bacteria exactly to that purpose. Good bacteria help to stimulate your digestive process and to absorb nutrients. They also help neutralize the bad bacteria that can lead to infections and illnesses. Now, after reading the text, so what is the answer to this question? Now, this is the answer. We go back to the text and you will find this is part of the answer. Good bacteria help to stimulate your digestive process, absorb nutrients, neutralize the bad bacteria, lead to infections and or help. I mean, the bad bacteria leads to infections and illnesses. And the good bacteria, what does it do? It neutralizes the bad bacteria, which leads to them. Now, we're going to see another text. It's about green tea. Before we read the text, we'll first read the question about the text. Why are antioxidants good for our body? Right. Now here is the text. Let's start reading the text. Better to be deprived of food for three days than tea for one. This is an ancient Chinese proverb. It stresses that tea is very important. Now, the Chinese have known about the benefits found in green tea since ancient times, using it to treat everything from headaches to depression for over 4,000 4, years. The secret of green tea lies in the fact that it is rich in the antioxidants that remove potentially damaging or harmful substances from the body. Right, this is the next part of the text. These antioxidants help combat diseases such as cancer and arthritis as well as lowering cholesterol and improving your general immune system. However, it's still not perfect as green tea leaves contain stimulants, including caffeine. Right, let's go back again to the, our question, which is why are antioxidants good for our body or for the body in general, right? We'll go back to the text and focus on the answers. So the answer to our question is, antioxidants are good for our body, why? They remove potentially damaging or harmful substances from our body. The second answer is they help combat diseases such as cancer and arthritis. And the next answer is that they lower cholesterol. And the next one or the last one is 
Antioxidants improve the general immune system. We have finished our lesson today. I hope you have benefited from it and everything was clear. And thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.